Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 263 of Optimal Living Advice, the podcast where we take any questions you might have about the many struggles of life and get them answered for you here on the show. I am your host, Certified Life Coach, Greg Audino, reminding you before we begin that if you have a question you would like help with on the show, we welcome you to email it to us at advice at oldpodcast.com. And I'm sure glad you're here today for an episode that is a little bit lighter in nature, uh, but gives us a chance to think a lot differently about a topic that we are all more involved in than we may think. That being creativity. Our asker today finds herself in some creative slumps from time to time, something particularly distracting for her as an artist. So what can we make of such things, and how do the supposedly non-creatives out there face the same challenge? Let's see. Here's her question. One of the worst things I struggle with as an artist is creative slumps. Like any artist, without rhyme or reason, I will go through phases where my juices just aren't flowing and new ideas are impossible to come by. There's no inspiration, even if my mood is generally good. It comes with the territory. I don't expect it to change. But what would you say to someone who wants to make the most of those lulls? Yep, a little something new today. Love to see it. Thanks for sending this in, Asker. It is a good question and an important one that definitely affects us all in ways that we don't realize. And I say that because creativity itself is really just everywhere. You know, I, I find that I never quite know how to define it or even gauge it in people uh, personally because it is just so incredibly boundless. Maybe part of me hoped I'd never receive a question about it for that reason, uh, because it is so hard to put structure around. But I think this very idea is something we should all be embracing more. So uh, let's let's roll with it. Now, as an artist uh, who has creativity at the forefront of their mind more regularly than most, I am sure you have crafted your own thorough definition about what it is or what it means to be creative. But I think that if there's one thing that does link everyone's definitions of creativity together, something we don't often realize, it would be that creativity is not as mystical uh, as it often appears to be, or maybe it's just mystical in a different way. What I mean is that whatever flame it is that constructs a creative idea, its components are already inside of us. Our creativity, or our basis for new ideas, has to come from ideas and experiences we've already been exposed to. It's the gathering of what we already know and fashioning it together in a new way, with a new appearance. It has to inevitably boil down to the repurposing of something that already exists or some things that already exist, rather than something new just appearing out of thin air. And remember that you are not alone in this. Artists are not alone in this. Not during a time in which new work is coming easy or new work is seemingly nowhere to be found. Because this applies to any kind of work or activity we might create. What's often misconstrued as something new, it really isn't. How do we develop new skills and hobbies? Usually because we're already doing them, and we find ourselves scrambling for connections so as to how to make sense of all of this. Say you're, uh, say you're kicking a soccer ball for the first time. You're creating something new. You're learning a new skill. Well, you're still going to rely on the kicking motion you'd use to defend yourself when your brother picked on you growing up, at least if you're me. Uh, you're going to lunge your weight forward because you know that creates force from other times you've done that. You are instinctually going to throw your hand out because you know that's how to keep balance when you're moving off center. So it's the culmination of so much that we already know. And it's you choosing to do it rather than this new gift being bestowed upon you out of nowhere. Not far off the action preceding motivation logic that I bring up a lot on the show. So whether or not you're an artist in the typical sense, your ability to create still lies within you at all times. And the real conflict during those times when you feel the, the magic isn't there is that you fall into the trap that many do, which is the trap of not realizing that the stage is already set and always is set for creation. Your slumps aren't about creativity being impossible versus possible. They're about how efficiently you are recognizing, cultivating, and using your many tools. And ironically enough, included in those tools 
are the draining feelings that you have during these dark days. So how can you fashion those brief moments of anxiety or bleakness? You're exposed to all kinds of new stimuli in these times, new conversations, new objects, new places, in addition to those feelings of um, artistic confusion. Of course, all of this is only helpful to you, should you choose to recognize it as such. You're still taking in new information, which you're able to blend with other information you have stored if you choose to. And if you want to be more welcoming of these creative slumps, uh, or, or dare I say, get out of them quicker, even though you said you don't expect them to change, then you must start realizing that you are still at an artistic advantage even if it goes against the grain of when you felt disadvantaged or how you've defined artistic advantage in the past. And you maximize this advantage by being aware of all that's entering your experience, what it consists of, and how to create more new experiences, either by your own hand or simply by seeing what's out there in the world. A creative slump is, is not a dark cloak preventing you from acting until it decides to free you. It's you not making the choice to engage in the process of creation. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, no one's saying you can't take breaks or have to feel like indulging in creation all the time. But it is an option all the time. Okay, friends, we have reached the end. Asker, I hope this helps you to take a second glance at just how much creativity you have at your disposal at any given time, and I hope it helps everyone out there to consider what types of mixing and matching you could do to orchestrate some change or newness in your own lives, if you would like to. It's not the ideas that drop down on us from heaven. It's how we choose to mold the ideas that we've been accumulating all along. Great reminder for anyone looking for a shake-up of any kind, even if there isn't a paintbrush in sight. So time to wrap up, folks. Thanks a lot for being here and making another episode possible. And do be sure to join me again after the weekend for the Monday show. I'll see you then.